This episode of Analog Resurgence brought to you by Skillshare. Stick around after the video to learn more. When we think of reversal film, many are quick to associate it with vivid, colorful images created with films like Ektachrome or Velvia or the legendary Kodachrome. Fresh color reversal film can still be bought, developed in the proper E6 chemicals, and experienced for yourselves. But what about black and white reversal? Very, very few labs in the world offer black and white reversal processing as a service for still films, and very, very few film manufacturers in the world actually produce a black and white film that's intended for reversal processing. In the world of motion picture developing, you can get Tri-X and Foma R100 in formats such as 8mm, Super 8, and 16mm that are designed for reversal processing done by motion picture labs. For still film, we have Foma R100, Adox Scala 50, and that might be about it these days. Black and white reversal developing is a tricky process that usually involves some pretty heavy chemicals, and it can't be done by simply using black and white film in an E6 color chemical kit. Reversal film, like Foma R100 is designed to give you bright, clear, contrasty slides, but if the process is done correctly, then many black and white negative films can be developed as a reversal with a variety of different results. Now, you might easily be able to get yourself a black and white reversal developing kit. I cannot. No one actually seems to make them in Canada, so they're either expensive to order or things that people won't ship at all because of the dangerous chemicals that they contain. Not impossible for me to get, but pretty inconvenient. And I'm much more interested in options that don't involve ordering a kit. In Europe, it seems to be a little easier with kits available from European manufacturers, including Foma, Rolly, Adox, and Bellini Photo. The Adox Scala kit is probably the one I'd recommend the most because it has a bleach that isn't super dangerous and it seems to be pretty cheap if you can find it. It's also something that can be shipped worldwide. And possibly the best actual lab out there for this stuff is called DR5, which is capable of developing a wide variety of black and white negative films as a positive using their own rather secretive process. But I wanted to see what I can accomplish on my own without a kit. So in this video, I'll be talking about how the black and white reversal process works, what it normally involves, and exactly how I've been doing it. My goal for this has been to try and accomplish this without using a variety of chemical components and having to order a ton of different stuff and instead see what I can accomplish using mostly off-the-shelf products. There's a lot of information here, and I definitely don't recommend it for people who have very little developing experience. I really recommend that everybody getting into film and doing this kind of stuff starts with doing black and white negative developing and learning the basics of that, which I've already touched on in another video, and I won't be covering in this one. This is also going to be a bit of a work in progress. I've spent the last three and a half months testing films, chemicals, times, and ratios to a point where now I'd really like to share this and see how others improve on it. I've done about 30 tests ranging from slides so dense you can barely see them to slides that actually look pretty good in a projector. Ideally, this should kind of act as like a starting point for anyone out there who's interested in this process but has always been confused by it. And before I really dive into this, I'm focusing primarily on being able to do this process with black and white negative films, the stuff that you can really easily get. Foma R100 and Scala 50 are out there, but they're not always the easiest to just walk into a camera store and pick up. There are also things that I haven't really been able to do as many tests with. Black and white reversal developing is an incredibly interesting process in how it works. It essentially develops the negative image, erases it, and then develops the area around that negative image in order to create a positive one. Let's go over the components that this normally involves. We start with our first developer, which needs to be a very active developer. A proper first developer for a reversal usually involves sodium thiosulfate or potassium thiocyanate, something that helps to give the developer very mild fixing properties. As we develop our negative image, this added component works to properly clear our highlights and remove some silver so that we don't end up with murky positives. During this stage, all of our exposed silver on the film from taking our picture is developed so that we have our negative image. Many people will mix their own first developer for reversal from scratch based on recipes for things like Kodak D11, D19, D67, D76, or 829, but of course not everyone is prepared to do that. There are great formulas in reference 
references in the Darkroom Cookbook, which is a book that I really recommend to people who want to get deeper and more technical on black and white developing processes. I've also spent a lot of time reading the forums over on Fotrio and Photo.net in things regarding black and white reversal developing. I'm not going to be covering formulas and mixing from scratch in this video because my focus, again, is to find a slightly more accessible way for people who aren't able to do that sort of stuff for themselves. But if that's the route that you want to go, then a lot of formulas are easily accessible through resources like that. Alternatively, Ilford has information on their website for reversing films like FP4 and PanF by using PQ Paper Developer and adding thiosulfate or thiocyanate. After our negative image is developed in an appropriate first developer, we need to put our film into a bleaching component. This is not household bleach. Do not use household bleach in this process whatsoever. This needs to be a special bleaching component that will remove the silver forming the negative image that we just developed. The only thing left on the film is the unexposed silver that wasn't part of the image that we exposed in our camera. For most people out there, the bleaching step in black and white reversal developing is the biggest roadblock. Normally, this reversal process involves the use of what's called R9 bleach, which uses potassium dichromate, a bright orange powder that's also really dangerous because it's carcinogenic. Unless you are being incredibly safe with this stuff using safety precautions, proper equipment and gear, and have some level of understanding and experience handling components like this and doing processes like these, don't handle this stuff. Don't do it. Don't be an idiot. It can be really, really dangerous stuff. A lot of these things can be. The formula for mixing this stuff is easy enough to find. It uses potassium dichromate, sulfuric acid, and water. And that's about all you need for this bleaching component, which is normally the one that's recommended for this process. An alternative to dichromate, though, is a powder called potassium permanganate, which is much less dangerous, but still requires mixing from scratch as well. And a recipe can be found on Ilford's website. After the bleaching step is complete, the film needs to go through a special clearing bath, which helps to remove any remaining tint that the bleach left behind on your film. There's a number of different formulas out there for this, but it's usually done by combining sodium metabisulfite or potassium metabisulfite or sodium sulfite with water. It's not very intense, but it's very important. If you skip this step, then you end up with positives that really aren't black and white and are usually a little more sepia. Once the negative image is removed by our bleach, the film is taken out of the dark and re-exposed. Normally done by just holding the film up to a light bulb for several seconds, this exposes the remaining silver on the film to the light. So after our negative is developed and bleached away, there is still a little bit of remaining silver on the film that wasn't hit by the light when we were exposing it in our camera. So we need to expose this remaining silver to the light so that we can form our positive in the final step. After re-exposure, the film goes through a second developing chemical so that the newly exposed silver is developed and our positive image is formed. The second developer in the process can be a much more basic developer and you don't need anything like thiocyanate or thiosulfate added to it. The Darkroom Cookbook suggests Kodak D72 or Dectol with a ratio of one to two for three minutes. Many people suggest skipping fix at the end of this process because that's normally meant to remove any remaining silver, which by this point should already be used up, but I find you Using fix is still a good way to finalize the process and make sure everything is done and that there's nothing really remaining on the film that should be removed. Those are the typical components that you need for doing black and white reversal developing, but they involve a lot of components that not everybody out there has easy access to, even if you're experienced with doing this stuff. So here's how I approach this process using things that are a little more accessible for myself. Let's call this the bare bones black and white reversal method, using things that are a little more available and require much less mixing. No dichromate, no permanganate, and hell, you can even bypass the re-exposure portion if you want to. Okay, so first we need to create a developer that has a tiny bit of fixing capabilities in it. After doing some research, I found a few mentions of how you can make an HC110 mono bath developer by combining developer, fix concentrate, and ammonia. So by reducing the fix and ammonia amounts drastically, we can make an acceptable first developer for reversal. For this process, I'm using HC110 developer, Ilford Rapid Fix, and household ammonia. I also need a couple of syringes because I'm measuring such small quantities of fix and ammonia. Ammonia is often found at hardware stores and obviously is pretty heavy stuff, which is why you should be using a mask and doing this in a well-ventilated area. Also, 
Never ever mix ammonia and household bleach because it will kill you. It's incredibly dangerous. Don't mess around with this stuff. I'll be mixing the HC110 using dilution A, which is one part developer to 15 parts water, and then adding a tiny amount of fix and a slightly larger amount of ammonia, then water to the 500 milliliter line. The fix will help to clear some of our highlights during development, and the ammonia will help to reduce the more acidic properties of the fix. So it's all about finding the proper balance between fix and ammonia with this. Here's the deal. No single developing time is going to magically work for reversing every type of black and white negative film out there. And different black and white negative films are going to require a little more or a little less of the fix and the ammonia solution. This is where it really becomes a bit of a work in progress because of this bare bones first developer method that I've got going on here. These are some of the films I've tested and guidelines for it if you want to try them yourselves. I recommend testing and seeing if you can improve on my results here. These are done using 500 milliliters of HC110 dilution A 1 to 15 at room temperature with certain amounts of fix and ammonia added to the developer mixture. First up we got some HP5. Shot at box speed this stuff can look okay but it also has a relatively low contrast to it that I've found. I developed this in 500 milliliters of dilution A with one milliliter of fix and four milliliters of ammonia added at 14 minutes for the first developer. Codex Tri-X is still a work in progress for me. I find it needs more fix and ammonia to clear things in comparison to Ilford stuff. This is dilution A with four milliliters of fix and 10 milliliters of ammonia added for about 15 minutes. It seems to give me pretty contrasty positives at box speed. T-Max 100 is similar, but I'm still getting a little bit of a tint on the film, so it might even require slightly more fix in the first developer or a little less ammonia to make it more active. This is dilution A with four milliliters of fix and 10 milliliters of ammonia added for 15 minutes as well. Codex XX Cinema Film has given me some very nice looking positives. This is done in dilution A with three milliliters of fix and 10 milliliters of ammonia for 10 minutes. I find it's a little easier to do than my experience with Tri-X so far. FOMA Classic 100 is also a really good looking film to use for positives. This result is dilution A without any fix or ammonia added for just eight minutes. It's nice and contrasty and clear and the FOMA stuff is really a good starting point. This is FOMA Creative 200 in 120 for 10 minutes with nothing added to the developer. The FOMA stuff seems to work well without anything added to the developer because it has that clear base. FOMA R100 is still something I'm working on but I might recommend using like Ilford PQ instead of HC110. This is R100 at eight minutes and the contrast is pretty crazy. So using too much fix in our developer will impact the density of the black areas on the film, which we can see in the borders of some of these test strips like this. Using too little fix though will result in dense slides with murky highlights. So it's used to kind of help rein in the fix and allow us to manipulate how much the fix is impacting things. The benefit of using HC110 in this process is that this acts as a single use first of Developer, which means you can mix it based on the film that you're developing as a positive. Big thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare makes exploring new interests easy and accessible by offering an insane amount of courses on a huge variety of topics for members. Photoshop? Learn it. After Effects? They got it. Indoor gardening? Definitely. This year I'm hoping to understand YouTube a little bit better and improve the channel because sometimes it feels like I have no idea what's going on. Skillshare can help me do that through courses like Marquez Brownlee's video on creating for YouTube. I love Brownlee's tech videos and he's even done one on Polaroids before and now I can gain some perspective of his work through this course with Skillshare. Check out Skillshare to explore something new or to learn more about something you're already interested in. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description of this video will get a one month free trial of Skillshare on me. A popular bare bones bleach alternative can be done using hydrogen peroxide and vinegar. I originally started by watching this video here on YouTube before trying to get better results. I've learned a lot since watching this, but a big shout out to the channel Go Everywhere for being my starting point. The problem is that the peroxide vinegar bleach solution needs to be done at a higher temperature, whereas the rest of the process is done at room temperature. My attempts to do this resulted in pretty heavy reticulation, which happens to grain during heavy temperature changes in development. So 
so everything looks extra chunky here. It also doesn't last long once you mix it. It's not consistently stable, and it can also lead to damaged and stained film based on how it interacts with the silver that it's trying to bleach away. The bleaching method that I've been using was suggested to me courtesy of Jake over on my Patreon. So a huge shout out to you, Jake, because this bleaching method has been working really well for me, and it also helps to fill in a huge gap in this process. For this bleach, we're going to use a two-step process. Step one uses a chemical called ferric chloride mixed with water, and step two, we use household ammonia diluted with water. We'll call those bleach A and bleach B. Bleach A is ferric chloride diluted at one to one with distilled water. Bleach B is ammonia diluted at four to one with distilled water. So four parts ammonia and one part water. Ferric chloride can usually be found at computer or electronic supply stores because it's a circuit board etchant. The ferric chloride will convert the developed silver on our negative image into silver chloride. And then an ammonia rinse will remove the silver chloride. So again, just be careful when you're handling this stuff because ammonia is very, very intense. Ferric chloride, not as intense, but stains things really easily. Next is our clearing bath. And I don't really have like a cheapo household solution for this stuff because it's a pretty important step for getting slides that are actually black and white, but it shouldn't be too difficult to source what you need. I buy sodium metabisulfite from a brewing supply store because it's used as a wine preservative, so it's not too hard to find. I just mix 30 grams of it into one liter of distilled water. At this point with an appropriate first developer, your bleach and a clearing bath, you're pretty much good to go. You can go through this process and after the clearing bath, just take the film off of your reel, hold it up to a bright 150 watt bulb and evenly expose it for one minute per side with the film about one foot from the bulb. Put it back on the reel and then use a developer to finish the process. But after some digging, I found one more technique to use in this process, iron out. Iron Out is a rust remover for drains that I'm able to pick up at a hardware store here in Toronto, but it has another use as a fogging developer for black and white reversal. Using this powder in some diluted water combines re-exposure and second developing into one easy step so that you no longer have to remove the film from the reel in the tank and then put it back onto the reel while the film is still wet. This is a single use mixture that you should mix right before you need it. I combine one tablespoon of iron out powder with 300 milliliters of distilled water. Shake it up and then just pour it into my tank. It has to be distilled water because of how iron out reacts with the water that it's in. Works every time, it's a little bit of magic. It also smells so heavily of sewage. So uh, keep that mask on and just be careful when you're doing this stuff. This mixture fogs the silver remaining on the film and develops it all in one easy step. So that is my bare bones method for black and white reversal developing. The key is really all in that first developer for mixing and finding the proper amount of fix and ammonia to add in order to clear things on your positives and make for really bright images at the end. The bleaching, clearing, and fogging developer all seem to run to completion, which means that you can't really do them for too long by mistake. And I've been able to use the same times in those steps for a variety of different film types. Low and medium speed films like 15100 ISO seem to work best for this process, whereas higher ISO films tend to give lower contrast results but can still be done. Also, not all black and white negative films are created equal. Films from FOMA, Rolly, and Agfa are good for reversal processing because they're made using a clear polyester base, which means it's easier to come out with clear, bright positives when using them for reversal developing. A lot of negative films have an acetate base though that makes for darker slides with poor highlights, so it requires some experimenting to see what works best. I'm going to do a developing example using a roll of FP4. And FP4 is a film that I recommend you start with for this process because it can give really nice reversal results if done properly. To briefly go over this again, I'm mixing my first developer using HC110 at dilution A, which is 1 to 15, combined with some Ilford Rapid Fix and household ammonia. I'm just going to mix 500 milliliters of this stuff for now. I'll do 30 milliliters of developer, 1 milliliter of fix, and 4 milliliters of ammonia, which is my mixture for doing FP4. Add those together and then water to the 500 milliliter line. I've also got both my bleach components and clearing bath sitting at room temperature of 20 degrees Celsius, and I've prepped a 300 milliliter bottle of distilled water for use with my iron out later in the process. For FP4, I developed this roll at 12 minutes in my first developer. 
I'll agitate the tank for 15 seconds every minute until the 12 minutes have elapsed. Once that's done, I'm not pouring the stuff down the drain, I'm pouring my developer into a jug for proper disposal. This developer solution is single use. In between the chemical steps, I need to rinse the film and I use a method called the Ilford wash. Fill the tank with water, invert five times, and then dump it out. Repeat and invert for 10 times, dump it out again, and repeat for a final time with 20 inversions. This helps to save some water on the rinsing steps. You're just doubling the inversions each time. Next up is my bleach part A, the ferric chloride mixture. I put this in the tank for five minutes, and I've been using the same time for bleaching, clearing, and iron out on all film types that I've tested, so just pay attention to those times. For the ferric, I invert the tank for 10 times every minute until five minutes have elapsed. And be sure to wear gloves here because this stuff stains things pretty easily. Once five minutes is done, I pour my bleach part A back into a jug for future use and then I repeat my 5-10-20 Ilford wash method. Now for bleach part B my ammonia solution. Just handle this stuff carefully and pour it into the tank for three minutes. I invert the tank again 10 times every minute. During this step, I'm also going to prepare my iron out solution because you want to do this right before you need to use it so it's super fresh. For this, I use one tablespoon of iron out per 300 milliliters of distilled water. Shake it up until the powder is dissolved and set it aside until we need it. Finish up the bleaching process by pouring the ammonia back into the jug for future use and then repeating the 5, 10, 20 rinse. Next, add the clearing bath solution for two minutes. And during this step, I agitate the tank constantly for the full two minutes. Once the clearing bath is completed, I pour that back into the jug again for future use. If you aren't using this iron out mixture, then this is where you would take the film out of the tank and re-expose it before using your second developer. You can see a faint image on the film once it has been through the bleach at this stage. I'll leave it in the tank though because I'm using my iron out solution. After the clearing bath step, I don't do my rinse and instead pour in the iron out mixture right away. Keep the iron out in for five minutes and I'll invert 10 times per minute. Once this is done, your film should be a positive. The iron out is exhausted, so I pour that down the drain, and then I do my rinses again. At this point, you can put it in the fix for a few minutes. A fix with hardener is suggested, like Codafix, because it helps to protect the emulsion. Be sure to rinse again after the fix as well. And then to finalize things, I use some PhotoFlow to help dry the film cleanly. And hopefully, we've now successfully reversed black and white negative film. This FP4 came out looking pretty good. It's a little dark when I'm looking at it, but you can improve things by overexposing a bit from the box speed, which will brighten things up. Or alternatively, you can try to increase your first development time. I'd start by adding just two minutes to it to start and see how that impacts things. But overall, there's good contrast here and mounting these and actually projecting them gives me some nice black and white positive images. This process is a little rough around the edges, but it works. And ammonia is the most intense element in it. Of course, you're gonna get best results if you're using an actual kit, but doing this process without a kit is entirely possible. Here are some things to keep an eye out for that you might encounter. If you have results where it looks like a negative image is superimposed over a positive one, then you either didn't bleach long enough or your bleach is too weak. The ammonia slowly picks up debris over time and turns orange, so it won't last forever. The ferric chloride, I'd say keep an eye on around eight rolls, but it also might be okay for much longer. If your positives are too dark, then you can try increasing your development time or exposing the film at one stop over. Usually the best results in black and white reversal with negative stocks are achieved by overexposing by a stop. HC110 is an okay developer. There are ones that are far more versatile, but also ones that are not going to be good for reversal development. You need a very active developer, so people do recommend paper developers like Ilford PQ. I've seen people talk about doing it with Rodinol, or if you can get your hands on some photographers' formulary Kodak D19 substitute, then that might also be best for reversal processing. Sometimes you still might get a tint on your film, which is uh, hard to eliminate. It might be your clearing bath isn't effective enough, but it can also be the results of poor bleach or even bad first development as I've found. 
So it's all about testing and just finding that sweet spot. As I mentioned earlier, DR5 is still the gold standard for reversal film developing, but David Wood, who runs DR5, has yet to fully reveal his process for that, but has hinted that he might do so in the future. DR5 does still process film, but it's a longer wait time if you send stuff to them. But they are capable of developing most things as a reversal with some really great results and samples that you can see on their website. Now, I'm not really sure exactly Exactly who the audience of this is for. I've seen a lot of people in the film community and especially online who are really interested in the idea of being able to develop black and white negative film as a positive. There's a lot of mystery around it and not a lot of people offer it as a service outside of motion picture labs. It's really cool to see them as a positive just like with color or reversal film but I also don't feel that this stuff scans or looks drastically better than just developing it as a negative. I do think that the best way to experience this though is to project it. I've gotten some results so far that I'm really happy with primarily for projecting and it's a very different process and experience for using black and white films, but it does require some work to get right. Scans on this little roll of HP5, for example, don't look fantastic, but actually being able to project it looks pretty good. And films like FOMA Classic 100 and FP4 are capable of better results as well. Ultimately, it's really about testing with this process. Nail down that first development and then things become a little bit easier for sure. Please share this around. Not just because I worked really hard on this, but also because black and white reversal developing is a big mystery for people, but it can be done with some care and some knowledge. I know that there are different ways of doing this and I know that there are better ways of doing this, but my desire with the bare bones method is to try and make it a little more accessible for people who wanna try and do it using things that you can get from like photo and hardware stores for the most part. There's gaps here and I can't provide detailed information for every type of film, but hopefully this serves as a starting point for those of you out there who are looking to get just a little more uh, positive. Mm. Thank you so much for watching this. And if you made it to the end and you understand all of that, then I'm very happy. Black and white reversal has been the main thing on my mind for way too long. And I'm gonna take a break for a week or two now, I think. Check the links in the description for some of the resources I mentioned in this video, as well as ways to help support this channel because a little goes a long way for being able to do this and continuing to do this what with film prices being the way they are and you know, the world being the way that it is. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon.